Hello guys, and welcome back. Today we are here with another ch chapter of how to. In this specific chapter, we are going to see the process of shape building, yes, different parts in order to create a specific pattern or symbol. In this case, we created this kind of alien creepy metal flower, and we are going to take a look on how I did to manifest this. So we're gonna be looking into some specific notes we have already seen in my LinkedIn or Discord uh, posts. But the, the 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 real reason behind all of this is that you get to understand the process, yes, the process of thinking when actually building the shape of what we achieve, want to achieve. So to begin with, I started with a shape node, yes, small square, half the size. And then I use a transformation 2D just to shape it a little bit better, like bend it. And once uh, I turn around this shape, I use our trapezoid transform grayscale. So for those who don't know what the trapezoid node does, it's basically a warp, which has a intensity map, which is by default trapezoid, and that's all. So you can basically warp your mesh, your your mesh, your your height map with the shape of a trapezoid, and you can do it from the top to the bottom, and you will see that how it reacts to your changes. So I can keep on doing this, and you can do this with uh, like many things. Like it's not only like for squares shapes. You can use it with a parboil. It's gonna work either way. You can make, you know, like can some kind of egg. This is or tear. You can do many things, but this is a really good note if you want to achieve something with like a conic or uh, triangle-like shape. Now, once I have my trapezoid, I did a crop just to have the image bigger and no tiling issues, of course. And this is where the tricky part gets. So. First, I did a directional warp. Yes, because I wanted to have this like curve like shape. And for that, I use a paraboloid with maximum scale at 1. And I use a, transforms, a transformation to denote so I could move yes, the shape into the direction I wanted to be. After that, I apply a little blur, a levels. And I used to splatter circular. So the splatter circular is a really powerful node for shape building, pattern building. Every time you want to build something like new or that has like a lot of, how could I explain it more, um, more specific in terms of spacing. Well, this is a really good node. So what I did is I create first my main shape, yes, this main, let's say, circle flower, and then I duplicate it, and I lower the scale, so I could subtract it on top of the main one, so I could get like these two different levels of grayscale. Then I blur it with the intention of getting a curve node. Yes, to create all of these details we have here. Now, let me get you close to them so you can see them. All these levels you see. Now, I didn't do that for a specific reason. Like, in terms of design. I did it for a reason of I want to show you something else later. And as we were going forward, you will see that we start to add a secondary shape. The inner circle of it and we are going to take a look at how I did it so I reuse my shape node with a paraboil and I use a custom node yes I really don't remember where I got this node but bear in mind that if you're using substance designer and you have a green uh, node this node is a custom node this is not exactly from Adobe itself if not it would be red or blue but it's from someone else and this means it's as SBS IR uh, node so I mask it so I could only get the middle and I use a transformation to D to make it smaller because it was way too big 
and then I went over the same process as before. I subtracted to this shape the edges of this platter circular around here, apply a curve to add more detail to it, and then a small blur before applying to our main shape. So, so far, so good. This is pretty much uh, what we've been looking all around the week. Like, we have already seen the curve node, we have an explanation for it and everything. Now, where does it come the, the important part of all this? Well, it comes here. I know it's silly, I know it's short, but this is the base color I created. And the reason I created it this way is because I wanted to show a new way of highlighting your edges in a really good, good and efficient way. So, in this last week we have used, we have seen a lot of the curvature family. Now, for those who don't remember, the curvature family is composed by three nodes. That is curvature sobel, curvature, and curvature smooth. These nodes take the information of our normal map, yes, and create a curvature map based on it. So, as you can see, each of them give you gives you like different variations or effects. If you're going for curvature, curvature is like the default map from it. If you go for curvature smooth, we are gonna have the same thing but a little bit like smoother, like with a small blur on top and a high pass on, on it. But if we go for curvature stubble, we're getting, gonna get a really high contrast image. And in this case, this is what we want. Because by using our levels, we can control the information and get exactly the edges we want to get. Yes, and we can repeat that process with any kind of shape. And we are gonna get just these edges being highlighted. As you can see here in our base color. Now, I didn't finish this before, mm, so I could show you now, guys, but this is not only useful for, you know, uh, these, like, base colors and so on. For example, it's a low roughness of many parts, and I plug in here a uniform color, which has a gray value. I can show you that by using this, I can create detail and interest in our roughness. Let's say I grab this here, I copy and I paste it here. Yes, I create a subtract. Plug this here. Increase the value and plug it. And you can see now the difference. You can see those edges being like super highlight. In this, in this specific case, yes, as we are treating with so much hard information, let's say, um, the result is a little bit wiggly. But no, sorry, this is because of the my tessellation factor is just like 16. If I put it to 64, you're gonna see the change, the actual change of it. So as you see, these are di like different ways we can use it, and we can use it not only for that, we can use it like to create detail in all of these like you don't need to use like exactly the same mask you can blend these with other things in order to get the amount of detail you want to get let's say for example uh, we're gonna get let's get maybe no let's get this one so let's do a brush pattern just to decrease it small tile generator with two no sorry with one we're gonna set this here and we're gonna make this a 2x2 two two. and we're gonna set the blending mode to max now we're gonna do uh, further like in maybe next chapter we're gonna talk about tile generator tile sampler how they work what's the main and big difference but just as you know like the, the, the specific thing you need to know is that the tile generator yes that is this uh, small node that we created here is a little bit different from the tile sampler as you can see. First is less heavier, this has 20.22 ms to render and this only has 150.44 ms to render. Now this one comes with a blending mode that is max, 
but this one comes with a blending mode that is add. So every time you work with a tile generator and you want to do what I'm about to do next, that is blending these four shapes between each other, make sure to lower to the bottom of it, search for blending mode and change it to max. Once the, the max is there, you can start doing whatever you want. In this case, I'm just gonna do an offset random. There we go. Some rotation random as well. I'm gonna increase a little bit more the scale. Scale random. There we go. And maybe some luminance. Yeah, maybe some luminance. So what I'm gonna do here is, is blend these things together. So as you can see, I'm adding detail to those specific edges, so I'm kind of like building a mask for it. So when I get this here, I'm gonna have the detail I was building, but it's gonna be affected by the, the, the detail map I, I, I created. Basically, it's an easier way to make like a generator where you can find all of these. But let's make a small blur here, maybe. Because I'm seeing it's a little bit too sharp for what we're doing. There you go. So there you can see the difference in these edges. Like, what's the difference between this and this? And of course, not having at all anything. Or having it all. Let's change shape. So you can appreciate better. Now, there's a the reason why I'm showing you this, guys, is because there's new things to come, and part of those those new things to come is creating generators, and we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get our own stone generator. We're gonna get, get uh, create our own mask generator for props that can be used not only on Substance Designer but on Substance Painter. Now. There was a final detail I wanted to talk about that this and it's about the output nodes because you can see this one has no name but output this is the default you can take it from here as you can see and in the last state I've got some requests from people as telling me that they were working with material that has that have like opacity mask but the opacity was not showing in their 3D viewport. Well, usually when you create a graph, you would go for this uh, this uh, sign here, metallic roughness, put your name and create. And it's going to create all the outputs for you, but it's not going to create the opacity as we have here. So you have to create it by yourself by clicking here or searching for output, you will get this. And once you are here, you will put in the identifier name, yes, the type of map you want to have remember the ad identifier is the is the part of the text right that's gonna be in the naming convention of your texture when you export it from substance designer and this part here is the one we we really want when we create a, an output node yes let me create a new one for you you will see that we are not gonna have any kind of component usage or space we will have no item compared to the one I already created. So what we are going to do is we're going to create add item. We're going to leave it as RGBA because we need those channels information and we're going to go for opacity and that's it. Now, when you first do it, you are not going to actually see. Next time you do it, you are not going to see a result in your 3D viewport. So what you have to do basically is do a right click here in the grid you have on your graph, yes, in the background your graph and you're gonna go to view outputs in 3d view what will this what we'll do is actually start rendering everything we have created and show it in your 3d viewport so I hope this uh, video was in of interest and useful for you uh, and you get to know better the trapezoid node and the curvature node which are actually really useful and I hope to see you in our next chapter.